State lawmaker Kaniella Eng says new laws are needed to prevent flotillas, like the one yesterday in Waikiki, from getting out of hand. Officials say 20 people were treated yesterday, mostly from drinking too much. Ten of them were taken to the hospital. They range in age from 17 to 26 years old. A 19-year-old woman was taken in critical condition. So who's taking action and what needs to change? Manolo Morales finds out. Manolo? Joe, the problem is there are no laws preventing swimmers from drinking when they're out in the ocean, as long as they're at least 21 years old. And even if they are underage, that's hard to enforce. Representative Ng says that's become a loophole and that has to change. Emergency officials estimate as many as 10,000 people were out in the water during the flotilla. And EMS tells us that hundreds of them had to be rescued, meaning that many people had to be brought in either by jet skis or any other vessel by emergency responders. Why is it not okay to drink on the beach, but it is okay to drink as soon as you step into the water? That makes no practical sense, and it's uh, endangering the lives now of, of many uh, young people. Representative Ng tells me the law needs to be changed that would make it illegal for swimmers to be drinking out in the water. That would allow law enforcement officers from the state land and natural resources to cite the revelers at the flotilla. From what I understand, DONR cannot enforce, or the city cannot enforce, on drinking laws beyond the beach. So once you step into the water, it's technically legal for you to drink alcohol. So that's where we need to step in and change the law, and that's ultimately the legislature's duty. Representative Ng says lifeguards, paramedics, and Honolulu police and DLNR officers did all they could do, but without the new law, the flotillas can still put too many people in danger. How difficult is it to enforce that law out here? It, oh yeah, it's, it's difficult for us. We need to observe the violation, and in this case, I mean, it was... It was the end result where the juveniles were already intoxicated. We're not trying to impede on anyone's fun. Like, I'm a young guy. Like, I'm all for having fun responsibly. But this has crossed a line repeatedly. We're actually, like, littering our beaches and endangering people's lives. I asked Representative Ng if this issue can be addressed during the special session that's planned to come up with a funding measure for the rail project. And he says it's possible and he will take it up with the leadership with the House and Senate. Now, I also checked with DLNR. A spokesman tells me the state is looking at new rules that are similar to the ones adopted in San Diego that help solve a similar problem with the flotillas there. We'll let you know what those rules are. Manolo Morales, KHON, 2 News. Another danger of these flotillas, the trash left behind. Environmental group Sustainable Coastlines Hawaii says it picked up about 300 pounds of debris after yesterday's event. And a new threat this year comes from large floaties. We ended up with a couple bags full of just floaty toys. Each one was filled with, I would guess, close to a million of these tiny uh, cylindrical styrofoam things that look like fish eggs. They float and they're going to get consumed by our wildlife. Picaro says if fish end up eating these styrofoam balls, they won't be able to dive down to feed because they float so well, and they'll end up dying. Drinking alcohol while in the water poses obvious dangers. According to the CDC, alcohol use is involved in up to 70% of deaths associated with water recreation. Almost a quarter of emergency room visits for drowning and about one in five boating deaths. Alcohol affects balance, coordination, and judgment. And those effects are magnified by sun exposure and heat.